sorry, wrong airplane. Hello everyone, Tricker here bringing you another video on my FA-18C video series. We are aboard the USS Carrier John C. Stennis and I'm happy to be bringing you my new video on Carrier Startups. This video has been verified by a current Hornet instructor and I would like to thank him for his time and service. This video will demonstrate different things such as the Carrier Startup, taxiing to the Catapult Shuttle, and launching from the Cat Shot. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First things first, just like in the shore beach startup procedure, when you sit down in the cockpit, we want to make sure ejection seat is safe. Parky brake is set, and master arm is safe. Now that we're on a carrier, you want to verify our wing position with the wing fold lever. They're both folded. While at sea, we can expect our wings to be folded the majority of the time. And the last thing we want to do is crunch our wings with another aircraft. Next, we're going to put electrical power on the aircraft by right-clicking on the battery. And performing our fire test for both channels. We'll start with channel A first. We'll right-click and hold. Observe the lights and sounds. After completing the test for channel A, we'll cycle the battery by left-clicking and right-clicking again. We'll left click and hold for Engine testing channel left. B on the fire test. Fire left. And we'll also observe Engine the sounds and the right. lights. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. After our fire test, we'll check to make sure we do not have an APU accumulator caution message on the standby caution panel. And we'll give the plane captain or PC the signal to start up the APU. Use here and we'll left click. And it's now starting. We'll check to make sure we have an APU accumulator caution message now, and we do. Waiting for the green light, there it is. We'll now give the PC the signal to start up the right engine. So we'll come over, engine crank to the R position, and we'll observe the IFE. We're looking for 18% on the RPM to introduce fuel, right shift and home. And there we go, we have light off. In my last video I said that uh, we should wait till 25%, but after talking to several Hornet pilots they teach 18% to introduce fuel and not 25. This of course is all pilot preference. When we introduce fuel for light off we want to pay attention to the IFE, watch for the EGT exhaust gas temperature. Make sure it doesn't rise above 750 degrees Celsius. Following our first engine start, we'll get a GPWS and flight controls voice alert, followed by a master caution deedle deedle. Start turning on some screens here. We'll start on the top left DDI, the right DDI, the HUD, and the MPCD. We'll change the FCS page to the left DDI here. On the right DDI, We'll go ahead and press the stop button. We'll go ahead and rack and stack our cautions by left clicking and holding. We'll move down here, we'll turn on some lights so you guys can see. We'll rotate the bleeds 360 degrees and you'll hear the ECS kick back in. Next we're going to check our canopy rail, make sure nothing's on it, nothing can get caught. And we'll go ahead and close the canopy by left clicking and holding. And we'll check the pressurization down here. That's not implemented yet. So we'll now focus on the left DDI. Check our cautions. We want to make sure there are no twos, meaning there's no cautions with the number two or right engine. There's no R's. Nothing wrong with the right system. Some examples would be a hydraulic two alpha, hydraulic two bravo, or a right generator caution. There's no ladder caution for the outside ladder. And the canopy caution is extinguished. Next we'll do our lights test. Here's the lights test switch. Click and hold. And we'll observe all the lights. Got the fuel enunciator AOA indexer. Shoot lights and the standby caution lights. That's a good lights test. Next we'll give the PC the signal to start the number one or left engine. Same as the right engine, we'll wait for 18%. So we'll come to the engine crank. And we'll left click for it to go to the L position. And we're looking at the IFE for 
There it is. Key command is right all in home. And we have light off. And same as before, we're looking for 750 degrees to not exceed. We see we're approaching that. We'll go ahead and shut the engine down. And that's a good engine start. We'll now check the left EDI here. We're looking for any ones or L's for the left side. And we don't have anything there, so we'll go ahead and rack and stack our cautions again by left clicking and holding. Now we'll start left to right. We'll turn on our OBOGs. Should get a deedle deedle, there it is. Verify the hook bypass is in carrier. And this switch can actually only be held in the field position if there's electrical power on the aircraft. We'll ensure any skid is off. We'll come over, we'll turn on our radar, do OPR for operate. So next we'll do our waypoint zero check. So we'll come down to the MPCD. You can put the HSI on any EDI if you wish, but I'm just gonna use this one here. You can left click here to get rid of the HOTAS or you can hit the backspace key. I'll left click to get rid of that. I'll go ahead and zoom in here. If you want to get rid of the moving map, you just have to click mode and then map. You see it gets rid of it now. So let's do our waypoint zero check. So what we want to do is click data. And we're on waypoint zero. And we want to verify these coordinates with the F10 map. And you can click F10, your current position. Put the mouse over on the top left, you'll see your current coordinates. And those coordinates check out with waypoint zero. So that's a good waypoint zero check. So we'll go back to the HSI. And we'll come over to the INS. We'll go ahead and put the INS into CV. When we put the knob in CV, we're turning on the data link, which will talk to the carrier with a given frequency. And that in turn will give us an accurate position from the ship. While the carrier alignment is happening, we'll give the plane captain a thumbs up and he'll tell us to raise flaps to half. Go ahead and press the FCS reset button first. And then we'll raise flaps to half. So as that's coming up, we'll go ahead and click on the FCS page here. Bring this up on the right DDI. And we're going to do our FCS I bit. And we'll come down. We'll hold the Y key, and you can see it brings up the FCS bit. And we'll go ahead and click FCS right here. You can see it says in test. And you can see the test is being performed right here. Well, that's happening, I'll go ahead and set the Zulu time. So we'll click time UFC and Zulu time right here. And you can see it's now in the HUD. So now that we got go on the right DDI for the FCSI bit, give a thumbs up to the PC and he'll go ahead and tell us to raise flaps up. So I'll go ahead and put flaps to auto. Now we'll do our uh, wipe out of the flight controls. Aft, forward left, right. With the wings folded, the ailerons won't move, but the other flight controls will. At this time, the PC will tell me flaps half, and I'll go ahead and do flaps half and set the takeoff trim. So you says, see 12 right here. We're gonna go ahead and put in 16 according to this chart right here, which is based off of weight. Make sure the nose wheel steering is off while well, check the rudders. You see nose wheel steering's in the HUD right here. So we'll hit the paddle switch and that turns off the nose wheel steering. Go full left and full right down the rudder. At, the, at this point, we'll give the PC the signal for four down. The four down hit check has recently changed. So we'll do everything we normally do, but we'll leave the tail hook up. Let's go ahead and turn on the pitot heat is right here. Av cool switch. This is actually a spring loaded switch, so this would come back to the normal position. Come over, extend our fuel probe, our speed brake, and the launch bar. The final checkers will go walk around and they'll check the aircraft to make sure everything is good to go. While this is happening, we can set the tack in. 
today's flight. My TAC in is going to be 74 x ray, so I'll hit TAC in. Make sure it's on transmit, receive, and x ray. Hold the on button. Now it's on. 74. 74 x rays in there. There's the CVN. I'll click TAC in here, which brings up the TAC in up here on the HUD. We can set up our IFF, ILS, if we have it. We'll go back to data in the HSI. Set up our waypoint or our bullseye here, but that's not implemented yet. We can click on aircraft and we can set up our soft altitudes down here for barometric and radar. We'll go ahead and click HSI again. We have an OK on the HSI here. So now we'll go over to the INS knob and we'll put it to IFA. I know in my last video I said go to nav, but in the real aircraft, we're supposed to go to IFA, so on the ground, shore, or uh, area startup, after the, uh, you got an OK on the INS, make sure you go to IFA for in-flight alignment, so that way the GPS can continually update. We'll now make sure we have radar altimeter on the UFC. We'll go to altimeter and click radar. We'll set 40 feet on the radar altitude alerter. We do this because the carrier is 60 feet off the ground, and sometimes with how heavy you are, you can see up to a 10 foot drop in altitude after leaving the cat shot. We'll set our barometric altimeter, 2992 is fine. We'll set our bingo fuel for the flight. Just click and hold on the arrows that you want. We'll set 8000 for this flight. Now we'll set up the EW suite. In order to set up the EW suite, we need to set them up in the correct order. So we'll turn on the RWR, the ALE 47 dispenser, and finally the ALQ jammer. However, the jammer is not yet implemented yet in the current early access. So what we'll do is we'll click this button right here, which turns on the RWR. And here's the dispenser switch, and we'll turn that to on. Bring the HOTAS back by left clicking down here or the backspace key. Now that the exterior four down check is complete, from the ground crew, we'll raise the launch bar, tracked speed brake, we track the fuel probe, put the aft fuel back to normal. Remember, this is a spring loaded switch that needs to be fixed, and the pitot heat back to auto. At this point, the PC will tell us to lower the tail hook. We'll lower the tail hook. Final checkers will walk around the aircraft, make sure everything is good to go. And he just told us that the hook's okay, so we'll go ahead and raise the hook. PC will usually come to the front of the aircraft in a brown shirt. He'll ask if we're ready to fly. We'll give him the signal that we're ready to fly, and he'll send us on our way to the yellow shirts, which will direct us to the proper catapult for launch. Before we taxi out, we'll make sure we at least the park and brake. Go ahead and set nose wheel steering to high. As you can see, it now says nose wheel steering high by hitting the nose wheel steering button twice. While the wings are folded, you don't have to continuously hold the nose wheel steering button. It's always going to be in the high position. Turn the uh, left DDI to the checklist page, the right DDI to the FCS page. We'll taxi out slowly. Doing a quick brake check. Following the yellow shirt instructions. Brake check. Brakes are good. It's a 50-50 chance that the ground crew will have you spread your wings, but for the sake of this video, we'll do it when we're hooked up to the CAT shuttle. We're heading to CAT 2 today. Is right here. Here are the JBDs. Jet blast doors. We're gonna taxi up and I'm gonna stop right before the cash shuttle. And we're gonna go ahead and extend our launch bar. Usually they do this six inches before the launch bar. We will taxi forward slowly while pressing the U key or uniform key. 
hook up to the cash shuttle. And there you go, you can see we're hooked up now. A little jerky motion, a little bit of steam coming out of the catapult, so we're hooked up to the cash shuttle now. Once we're hooked up, we'll go ahead and spread our wings. We'll right click twice, have them come down. We'll visually check to make sure nobody's out here in the way first. You see it says wing unlocked here on the DDI. Once they're fully spread, we visually confirm it. We'll go ahead and mouse wheel scroll forward here, here to lock them. And you can see the wing unlocked has now disappeared. At this time, the launch officer requests hookup. Top side will give a hand command to take tension. And at this time, the aircraft director gives a signal to the pilot, stand by to launch, and then hands you off to the launch officer. Launch officer will command pilot go to full military power, combat power if necessary. So due to the fact that if we go uh, full power on the catapult, the aircraft will launch, so what we'll do is we'll adjust our sequence for the sim. So to keep it somewhat realistic, we'll go half power on the engines. But first we'll do our takeoff checklist. Controls check, wings are spread and locked, trim set 16, flaps half. Hook up, harness locked, warning lights check, nose wheel steering off, seats armed. And the takeoff checklist is now complete. So we'll go ahead and put the HUD on the left DDI here with the FCS on the right DDI for takeoff. What we'll do is we'll go half power. We'll wipe out the flight controls twice by doing a box pattern. We'll wipe out the rudders twice by going left and right twice on the rudders. Check launch bar is retracted right here. Come over, check our hydraulics, make sure they're at 3000. Check the IFE, make sure our nozzles are opening. We'll check our blends on the FCS page here. That looks good. We'll give the salute, and when we give the salute, we'll command full power. So here comes full power. Put our hand on the towel rack on the right here. Here we go. We'll get airborne, put our hand back to the stick now and you're up and flaps to auto. We'll go ahead and do a clearing turn here. There's a good video tutorial series by Lex, who's also an F-18 pilot. I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. This is gonna wrap up my startup video for the carrier based procedures. Just remember this module is still in early access and features are still on the way that may change this video in the future. Stay tuned for future videos on the Hornet. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'd like to thank Skatezilla for giving me the opportunity to use his Puke and Dogs uh, paint scheme. I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Also, I'd like to thank the Hornet pilots that helped me put this video together. Thanks for watching.